Volumetrics are a great crutch for drowning your scene in enough fog to hide all the lack of detail. Because it can't be considered low effort if it's an abstract film-like aesthetic mood piece thing. Even if your scene looks like garbage without it. But hey, that's not going to stop me from using it. So I'm going to start off with a real quick rundown of all the volumetric settings. The most important probably being max bounces under light paths. This will give you more detailed and realistic fog, but it's at the cost of increasing your render times by quite a bit. Step rate is effectively the resolution of the voxels that make up the volume. In this case, a lower value will give a better result, but you're probably not going to notice much of a difference unless you're using a texture with your volume. In the Material tab, check the Homogenous button if you're not using textures. Theoretically, this makes it render faster by telling Blender that your volume is all one same density, but recent versions do this automatically, so you can just click this button if you feel like it. Sampling is used for how you want to light your volume, and interpolation is more used for smoke simulations. Unchecking some of the ray visibilities can improve render times, especially with shadows, but this may impact a lot of how your lighting interacts with the volume. So there's four nodes you can plug into the material output. Principled volume, volume absorption, volume scatter, and emission. And as much as people use principled BSDF for everything, I wouldn't really suggest using principled volume, because it has a lot of settings that you won't really ever use, and missing a lot of the settings that you should be using. So volume absorption by itself is typically invisible until you start to add a color to it. How it works is a little confusing because the naming is a bit backwards compared to how it actually functions. What it does is absorb all light colors except the color it's set to. So if it's green, it'll absorb red and blue light and only let green pass through. And this is why when it's set to white, all the light's allowed to pass through, and when it's set to black, no light is. So by itself, this can be really useful for composition to remove certain colors of light from specific areas or to just block light entirely without anything visually in the way. Volume scattering is where we get the fog effect, and if you change the color of it, you might think that it's behaving weirdly, but what's happening here is we're telling it to scatter only the red light, and by doing that, we're allowing green and blue to pass through unscattered, creating cyan. This combined with colored lights can allow certain lights to be scattered and other lights to be passed through. But a much easier method is just to go to the light's ray visibility settings and turn off volume scattering. So overall, changing the scattering color is a bit of a niche use case. What you should tweak is the anisotropy value. How this works is it affects the direction light is scattered through the volume. So a value of negative 1 means all the light's going to be reflected backwards, a value of 0 means it's going to be scattered in all directions equally, and a value of 1 means it's going to be reflected forwards. And with a simple setup like this, you can take advantage of using both directions at the same time. The volume scattering node also has five different options for how it'll scatter the light. Each one was built with a specific use case in mind, and they all have their own settings. But for the most part, you can just use whichever one looks the best in your scene because none of them should really render faster than the others. It is worth looking through all of them though and tweaking with the settings depending on your lighting and size of the volume. Emission's pretty straightforward. It'll make your volume glow just like how it would on a surface. So then by plugging in some textures, you can make some procedural 3D glowing effects. Since volumes have their own output, you can mix them with any translucent or transparent shader you plug into the surface output. Pairing this with a glass shader is a really easy way to make fogged glass or murky water. And of course, all the normal settings still apply, so you can make some neat effects with this. Now, the biggest downside of using volumetrics is they can be really expensive to render, but here's a method that can make them almost instantaneous. The first thing you need to do is disable most of the ray visibilities, especially shadows. Depending on your scene, it might change your lighting a bit, so you can go back and tweak that. Next, we're going to move the volume object into its own collection, and to make things easier, I'm going to move everything else into another collection. Then go into the filters of the outliner, and make sure you have holdout and indirect lighting enabled. From here, disable the volume collection you just made using this checkbox, and we're going to make a new view layer with copied settings. Now, while we're on this new view layer, re-enable the volume collection, and then turn on holdout and indirect for everything else. Your scene should look something like this or this, depending on what your volumetric setup is. Then the most important step is to go to the override section in the view layer tab and set the sample size to something very low. If we render out the image, it might look like there's no volumetrics, but what we need to do is go to the compositor and duplicate this rendered layer input. 
Then we're going to switch it over to the volume layer, and we should have two images, one without volumetrics and one that's only volumetrics. All we have to do is add the two layers together and it should look almost identical to the original image. But of course you can mix these two layers in any way that looks the best. Once again, everything in this video is going to be available for download in the description, so check that out if you're interested.